Hi, I'm Dr. Matthew Norton, founder of People Plus Purpose, and your host on this episode of the Truth Behind Dentistry podcast. And today, I'm happy to be joined by Barbara Tritz, a biological dental hygienist who also practices oral facial myofunctional therapy in the state of Washington. She is accredited in biological dental hygiene and is on the board of the International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology, where she is chair of the Biological Dental Hygiene Committee. Welcome, Barbara. Well, welcome, Matthew. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. That was a mouthful, actually. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of things that you've done and are a part of, I must say. So, But it gives us a wealth of conversation possibilities here. So um, I, 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 you said that the uh, finding the root causes of dental disease is your driving passion and that you love helping people find their total body health. And I love that. <laughs> and so based upon that stated passion that you have, uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on kind of what you see as some of the bigger pain points in dentistry today. Okay. You know, so I've been a dental hygienist for a long time. And as a dental hygienist, you know, I worked in conventional, traditional practices for a very long time. And we were so focused on getting the tartar off and getting the plaque off and, and doing this all within the patient's dental insurance. And what I found was that you know, they were still bleeding. They still had gum disease. They still had tooth decay. And so I knew I was missing the root cause of what was really going on. And so that led me on my biological journey. But the thing that really held my patients back was dental insurance. Mm -hmm. You know, they would only do what their dental insurance would cover. And if you only do what insurance covers, you'll never be healthy. So, so, you know, I work in a fee for service practice now and my patients are so much healthier because they own their health. They, they're paying for it and they value it. And when you don't pay for something, you don't value it. So, so uh, I, I agree. I agree with that. Tell me a little bit about what shifted in maybe understanding about root causes over time as you get further education, but also just your own experience journey. What shifted in terms of your understanding of root causes and then maybe connect that to what happens better outside of that insurance model into more of a fee-for-service uh, approach? So, you know, I mean, because so I use a phase contrast microscope and I take plaque samples and I look at it with the patient so that they can see what bacteria they have in their mouth. Mm -hmm. And in a healthy mouth, the microbiome, the bacteria looks one way and in disease, it looks totally different. And, you know, there's my my research into learning more i mean i i really strive to be an educated dental professional mm -hmm. and what i found even 15 years ago was that there's a link between heart disease and gum disease and then gum disease and dementia and so those two really those health connections i mean there's so many more as well right but you know we have to look at you know if I have patients who have, you know, really good oral hygiene and they're doing everything I said, yet they still had bleeding, they still had spirochetes, they still had tooth decay, then I had to ask myself, what am I doing wrong? Because what I'm seeing clinically and they're doing everything that I know. Right. And so... So I left conventional practice and, and I found my way to a biological dental office. And that was a profound revelation for me. It was, you know, when the doctor said, well, they have decay because they have leaky gut and they, they aren't absorbing their fat soluble vitamins. And, and, you know, that's what really flipped me on my head. It's like, oh, it's nutrition and it's dry mouth and it's bleeding because of their mouth breathing 
and their systemic issues. And it's not because they aren't brushing and flossing their teeth. It is, it is about so much more. And for so long, dentistry has, you know, put the head over here on the, on a shelf and, and not connected it back to the body. Yes. So by connecting it back to the body, it's like, oh, that's, that's what I was missing. Yes. Yes. You know, the, the nutrients to feed the good bacteria and, and the, you know, the vitamins, the supplements, the minerals, the chemicals that we're eating and, and the sleep and the lack thereof. Um, there's so many systemic issues that all play a part. And, and what really, you know, just brought it home is that gum disease and tooth decay are the canary in the coal mine for a way bigger systemic issue. Yes. Yes. And it just is, it was a game changer for me. That's great. And, and to be educated, you know, by healthcare practitioners that, that understood, you know, what I was searching for, because this wasn't in my dental literature. Right, right. And so I had to go outside of that box and, and then, it, and then everything made more sense. So, so tell me a little bit more about the daily experience then with patients in your hygiene contribution to them and in, in your in your regular visits with them what all is transpiring what are you teaching what are you what informate health information are you gathering from them um what's changing even that relates to a different billable entity really in the sense that insurance was only going to go for a certain you know in the box range of of offerings yeah what it, what all are you doing how far does that branch out into unique offerings that are having to go outside of insurance well, I mean, I'm still doing a lot of traditional dental hygiene. You know, I'm still getting the plaque off. I'm still scraping the tartar. But I'm, I'm, you know, when, when I first see a patient, I do what I call a hygiene intake. So I'm looking for information. I want to see all of the things that are going on. I look at their medical history. Um, as a myofunctional therapist, I'm really focused on airway. You know, do they have tongue tie? Do they have lip tie? Do their tonsils look like two golf balls in their throat? Um, you know, and I ask them about how they're sleeping, how many times they wake up at night. Um, do they have signs of clenching and grinding and broken teeth and acid reflux and silent reflux? And then I also take pH and I do nitric oxide test strips. And, and then once I have that information, then, then I start looking in the mouth and I, I use a disclosing solution so that I can see old plaque, which will be pink, uh, or excuse me, purple, new plaque, which is pink, and then acidic plaque so that I have a really good idea of how uh, dysbiotic, how pathologic that plaque biofilm really is. And then from there, I use um, an air polisher, which is, you know, I wish every dental hygienist had that. And because I'm also, then I'm disinfecting and I use ozone, ozonated water. And ozone kills bacteria, fungi, parasites, viruses. So I'm disinfecting more effectively than your traditional office that doesn't use ozone and an air polisher. You know, and then I go underneath the gum line to get the tartar. And then I also do some hand scaling with ozone oil so that, again, I'm disinfecting the whole entire mouth yet again. And then I clean the tongue and we go over oral hygiene. Then we look at the microscope and see, you know, what all is living underneath there. And then I wrap it up with, you know, home care. And, you know, the patients always ask, Did, are we going to look at the microscope today? Hmm. And it's like, you know, yes, I've already taken a slide and, and we'll look at it and, and then we'll put it all together because I've shown them if they have bleeding gums and we talked about oral hygiene and then I write it all up for them. So they have a homework sheet so that they go home knowing exactly what I want them to do. I have them come back. If they have gum disease, I want to see them again in like a week or two. They've got... You know, we can heal 
from major surgery in 10 days to two weeks. I mean, there's still healing going on, but we can get some major healing. So if they still have bleeding gums in two weeks, then, then we start talking salivary diagnostics. So I get a better picture of what all is underneath there, looking at the genetics. And then I also refer them back to their primary care physician, because at that point, we need more total body health. And we need digestive, you know, are they absorbing their, their nutrients are that what their, what's their minerals and vitamins levels? You know, if if vitamin D is in the tank and, you know, their, their vitamin D score is like 16 uh, nanograms per milliliter, um, then, then they're never going to heal. They're, they're not sleeping well without vitamin D. So it has far reaching um, effects. And so I want, I want their primary care provider on this health journey with us because dentistry shouldn't be working in a silo. Right. You know, we've got to, we've got to look at the airway. We've got to look at, you know, gut health. Do we have silent reflux? You know, people with sleep apnea have silent reflux, so they don't taste it, but it damages their teeth and it drops the pH and their mouth breathing at that point. And so all of those factors come together. Right. And trying to get somebody just to brush and floss, it's not going to cure the problem. Right. right. So in part, you're so you're doing uh, further evaluation yeah. in many uniquely different <laughs> ways than a person would be accustomed to in a typical hygiene evaluation correct are offering additional service contributions within your visits possibly that possibly take a little bit longer or require more frequent care than might typically be done right that would be yes. those would be some differences you're seeing things that are not often seen mm-hmm. Um, and then it sounds like because you recognize you can have so much expertise to offer solutions for them, but not necessarily all needed areas of expertise, then you're working to build more community relationship with other expert providers that can help in different areas that are related, but not necessarily your service offering. Is that a reasonable summary? That is is it in a nutshell, yes. And given the fact that just like the majority of dentists and hygienists have not been trained to to think and see this way, uh, the majority of medical doctors, um, I'm envisioning, uh, or knowing, we'll say one way or the other, uh, would not know fully what to do with some of your recommendations, would not, are not particularly nutritionally savvy relative to gut microbiome and what that's <laughs> going to do to oral microbiome. So have you then made the effort, that was a long setup for a question, <laughs> have you then made the effort to be do research and selectively uh, connect with other healthcare providers in your community that you could refer people to, to go beyond what their, their providers probably know if they're interested? Is that part of what you, what you in, give energy to? Absolutely. I mean, so I I live in the greater Seattle area and Bastyr uh, College is right up the hill from us. So I do have a really good network of naturopaths in this area, which is very fortunate. Right. And and a lot of them are patients of our office. So they understand, you know, because I've talked with them and shown them the microscope and just in, you know, enlighten them to right. our dental world. And, right. and my, my dentist is also, you know, a, has a good network. So working, you know, expanding that is so critical. Yeah. And, and then having them on our team and then referring patients back and forth because they understand, you know, the importance of gut health right. and, and then bringing it back to teeth and you know, if you don't have enough fat-soluble vitamins, you're going to have tooth decay. 
And if your vitamin D is low, you're going to have tooth decay. Yes. And if you have lead toxicity, you're going to have tooth decay. And so being aware of that, right. it's so critical. Yeah. And, and having good providers on this health journey for right. our patients is so important. Yeah, that's great. So you have kind of, you're maybe a little bit naturally fortunate by location, yes. but also over time of building relationships. And then even still with those nearby resources, you're still making the effort to partner, collaborate, share education. Um, so, yes. and, so, and given the fact that many listening, watching us, dentists, hygienists will may feel like this is new to them, then I would love to hear some of your input for kind of suggested first or next steps, maybe uh, if, if they want to know more. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, later I want to uh, kind of have you share how they can get in touch with you specifically. Mm -hmm. what Absolutely. You to offer. But, but just from a perspective of if they're saying, wow, this makes sense, or this is different, uh, I, I, maybe I'm missing something, then what would you see as first steps? And um, how far do you feel like is reasonable, even in the beginning, for them to be able to offer versus what they need to find in terms of a community of, of fellow experts around them? What, How far would you see this going uh, for what a hygienist is going to deliver? Well, I mean, I would love to see this as the standard of care, you know, with especially because dentistry and, and oral health is so connected to dementia and to heart, heart attacks. So I think dentistry really needs to up its game, you know, the whole dental profession, dental hygiene, dentists. Um, so I, I, I'm, you know, just rattling the cages, trying to get my message out. So as I'm a member of the International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology, and, and that's a great starting place. You know, we have an accreditation program for hygienists. It's a great intro. It's 10 units and you do it at your own pace at home. And we have meetings twice a year. Okay. And so the next one will be in Orlando in September. And, and I'm also a member of the um, American Academy of Oral Systemic Health. So, you know, being a member of these communities is, is the place to start, you know, getting that foundation, getting that education, and then start reading books. You know, I have, I have a whole library of books I've read. And you know, self-educating and, and just being curious, mm -hmm. looking, looking and, and, you know, I have a, a dental hygiene blog. And so I have a hundred articles on there that I have written so that, you know, they're short articles, they're, they're aimed at the public, but yet I still have a lot of science in there for my dental health professionals that, you know, that are interested in learning more. So there's, there's since we're on that now, why don't yeah. you go ahead and say how they can get to that blog just so we okay. don't decide of that? Thank you. So my blog is queenofdentalhygiene.net. And you know, it's I've well, got who, who would that be, Barbara? Who would the <laughs> queen of dental hygiene be? <laughs> yes, I'm self-anointed. It's like, you know, my my daughter had pushed me to uh, start a blog because she said, mom, you have so much information to share. Sure. And, and I finally said, you know, I don't know how to do it. And she said, I'll help you. And I said, okay, I'll do it if I can be the queen of dental hygiene. And so. Okay. So. <laughs> she said, I will help make you that mom. Yes, she I will did. Help you do it. She did. So <laughs> here I am uh, eight or nine years later, still, you know, still writing and, and I, I love sharing this information and it it's so critical because, you know, with dementia, it's, it's, it's such a horrible disease. And, and there's so many things that we can do to help prevent it. Yes. And, you know, when I see spirochetes on a microscope slide, especially on a five-year-old, mm -hmm. that just, that gives me, you know, chills and scares me. And, and it makes me really, you know, cause then I know the whole family's got spirochetes and the dog probably has spirochetes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have to, 
you know, test. Because if we don't test, then we won't find it yeah. and we can't prevent it. And, you know, people can have really good brushing techniques and hide dental disease. And so their tissue looks good and they get the, you know, I'll see you in six months. And yet there's a little bit of bleeding, but, you know, tissue looks good. I'll see you in six months. And they keep get kicking that can down the road. And but if I take a microscope slide on a five year old that is teeming with spirochetes, we can fix it now. Mm and prevent it. You know, spirochetes go into spore form and they hide in the body. They have found spirochetes in the synovial fluid and joints of rheumatic uh, arthritis patients. Mm. And they have found spirochetes in the brains of dementia patients and in the heart muscle. So, you know, and it all comes from the mouth. And so this is so important that we, you know, get further education as a profession. Right. And really dive into, you know, why is this occurring? Where is this coming from? And how do we fix it? Yes, that's good. Yeah, I mean, the dental profession, like many other aspects of life, uh, tends to get siloed in expertise, specific yeah. technical areas of knowledge that then seem to function, behave as though it's a standalone entity yeah. that's not connected to anything else, like the mouth is somehow separate and uninfluenced yeah. and non-influential, yeah. you know, just like any number of other physical systems or experts in those physical systems, as though they're not related to each other. Uh, I think for the most part, conceptually anyway, that we've gotten beyond that way of thinking conceptually, but in terms of how it plays out in yeah. healthcare, uh, and then when you combine an insurance model, which is designed to not pay anything mm -hmm. more than is necessary, yeah. we've got a problem there. And since so many people are, the vast majority of practices are insurance, excessively insurance dependent, and it's hard to get out of a model that really doesn't want you to change a model because Correct. it's more containable. Like, like, like the, the queen of hygiene is not going to be contained, right? So no. <laughs> she's going to run places that maybe we don't <laughs> want her to run. So we're like, we can't pay for that, right? So even if we are uh, diminishing healthcare costs overall by helping save a life, right? And keeping people from greater disease, but that's not, that's, that's long-term thinking, not the short-term thinking people get caught in, right? So I, I, for quite a while, have felt like that the world of hygiene has so much more potential, not only that the dental world has so much more potential to be impactful in so many other ways, and it's important that they do so, but the role of hygienists specifically because of time spent uh, with patients mm -hmm. uh, to be more of a health expert within mm -hmm. the practice. So I'm excited to hear what you're sharing and would love to continue the conversation actually. And there's a part of me that keeps feeling like I want to somehow be more a part of the solution for that to change yeah. uh, because it needs to. And I'm very much a, a proponent of professional networking in the sense of developing teams of collegial people who can bring their expertise to support greater effectiveness for a patient. So I'm glad to hear of some of what you're doing in the community. Um, and we're, gosh, we're about out of time here. So um, Maybe uh, I did want to ask you in terms of a book or two, you mentioned about books. Do you have a recommendation or two that comes to top of mind for those listening? You bet. My One of my favorite is The Dental Diet by Dr. Stephen Lynn. Okay. So it talks about nutrition and how important nutrition is. And, and it's an easy read. You know, it's, okay. it's something I just, all my patients, I recommend it. Okay. And then, um, there's the book Beat the Heart Attack Gene by doctors uh, Brad Bell and Amy Donin. And again, you know, heart heart disease and its connection and and how important a healthy mouth is. You know, the, the mouth is kind of the 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 flame that lights the fire in the arteries. 
So if we have an abscess, if we have periodontal disease, if we have aggressive tooth decay, all of that can light the fire in the arteries and, and trigger a heart attack. And a, you know, a dental hygiene visit can trigger a heart attack up to 30 days later. Mm. So it's, you know, prevention and just really paying attention to oral health is, is you know, it's a lifesaver. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, very so. good, very good. Well, I, I so appreciate your passion for this. I think where we started in the, in the introduction, it's all held to be true. Uh, it's, it's a truth in advertising here that this is a passion of yours. You, you're a wealth of information. Thank you for all the work that you're doing and have done to get to this point. Thank you for rattling bushes. And I want to help you rattle in any way that I can. All right. Thank That's you. Starting with today's conversation, right? And yes. we'd love to stay in touch and maybe come back and visit again. Okay. For, I would love that. Into some other directions because we just, I feel like we just kind of touched upon what's what was possible today so for those people who are who are interested and I can't imagine who wouldn't be but uh what's the best way for them you mentioned your 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 blog what's what's what are some of the ways that they could get in touch with you um well my blog is a good place to start my email address is my name Barbara Tritz t-r-i-t-z at gmail and they're welcome to email me as well so okay. between the blog and my email, there, you know, any way that I can help them, there, there's a whole network of biological dentists across the United States and throughout the world. Um, you know, so that we have resources right. and and just educate yourself. You know, there's so much information out there. And I think, you know, the the public needs to be better educated because then, you know they can ask their dentist to to really up their game as well. That's great. Well, I certainly appreciate your time and uh, I look forward to the next time that we speak. And I encourage everybody who's who's watching today to reach out to you and uh, mm -hmm. learn some more and see how they can be a part of the solution moving forward. Thank you. Thank Absolutely. you so much for this opportunity, Matthew. Absolutely. It's been my pleasure. So for everybody who's watching, uh, this is Dr. Matthew Norton, founder of People Plus Purpose, and I have been with Barbara Tritz, and I hope you've loved the episode, and I look forward to being with you next time. Thank you.